So I had a subscriber ask me on one of my videos uh, how to make a turnout DCC friendly. Uh, Astrogator asked me, uh, how do you uh, power the frogs? And I was like, I have no idea. So what I did was I went and I asked Bruce Jarreau who made my uh, turnouts. And he says, uh, let me get you some information and I'll send it to you. So uh, like I have back here, there is a really cool um, animation of how the frog is powered when the points move. So um, in this video, I'm going to show you how we do that. I don't use um, tortoise switches. Uh, I like to kind of use the manual throws. And because of that, it's a little bit different on how you uh, juice the frogs or power them. So uh, I found a, a 220S by Caboose Industries, and that is what you would use for a ground throw to uh, power frogs, which I didn't know. So we're all learning here and uh, we're having fun also. So I'm going to show you in this video how to set up the 220S and um, what I did to get the, uh, the frog juiced. We're juicing frogs, so stay tuned. I have this, these, were all, these two were connected. I cut each end and what was happening was before I cut these, I would throw the turn out and it would short everything out. Uh, I'll put a, a link over here on that, to, to that video. But um, I cut these and it solved my problem. I didn't have any more issues of it uh, shorting out my system. But this is empowered. So uh, I do have sometimes some issues if I'm not going fast enough that my engines will stall. So how do we fix that? I like manual throws, as you can see here. I like having that additional aspect of the uh, switching operations. But Caboose Industry sells a switch, a hand throw switch, that uh, makes you capable of powering this frog through these metal pieces right here. So we're going to go into that and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Something else I want to go over real quick is um, on my layout, this here will be a block detection for a um, tunnel that'll be back there past the switch. This bottom one uh, on a prototype is for a derailleur. So it's usually red. I've never seen it green. I'm assuming once the derailleur is open, it turns green. But in all the pictures, it's always red. However, I don't have a derailleur. So what I want to do is make this my switch detector. So when it's green, it'll be for mainline movement. And when it's red, it'll be for the siding, which is my arriving and departing. So, and here's my main line. So when it's green, it'll be switched to this rail. When it's red, it'll be switched to this. And this Caboose Industries ground throw will also allow me to do that while juicing the frog. This is everything that that package comes with. We got visual instructions here, and then word written instructions here and then these are all the parts that come with it so i will read these and i will get back to you on how to put this together all right so we're going to go over how to put all this together it is quite fun i test did a test run um, but we're going to do it right here so everybody can see. So you see this little pocket right in there? That's where we're going to do a lot of our work. We're going to take this U-shaped spring contact and put it into that hole right there. You want to make it so these pieces right here are facing out. So 
So you slide it right in there like that. Now for the fun part, this piece right here came off of this sprue. There's two of them, just in case you lose this one. There's a tab right there at the top. That has to stay on the top. And this flat side has to go to the to this um, bronze section. Slide that right in there. I'm gonna hold it. And just pressure fits in there. Kicks that spring out like that. So then it'll put tension on it. When we slide our We're going to slide this three-pronged piece into here, hook it, and then push this little piece in there, the tab, oh, there we go, it snaps in place and it locks. Alright, so now this brass piece here is pushing on these metal pieces so that when we move this it'll go touch all the tabs going across and if you so desire there's this three hole uh, rectangle piece here that slides into here and keeps them all spaced apart so they don't touch each other They said it's going to be a tight fit, so it is, but it works. So I'll slide that about halfway up, and that's it. That's how you build it. Those are all, and then we'll just solder all the different wires to there. Okay, now that that's built. We have this piece right here that is a shim to go under here just in case you need to raise this off the ground a little bit. Um, much like this one is here, I had to raise it with uh, some extra ties. So I'll be able to take this out and slide this under there and then put my put my caboose industries throw bar right there and it should be the right height so now we have to drill a hole that will accommodate these three bars now this is a this is a 23 64 drill and it's almost exactly the same size so I'm thinking a 3 8 would probably be perfect but I don't have a 3 8 so we'll see if this will work I'm gonna test fit it see where these this hole will line up and I'll drill it there so I pulled out my old throw bar and it has a hole right there so we have to go to this and see which one will work best which it looks like this one is gonna work the best this has two this has one this has a flat piece that has a hole now it looks like an old coupler so they have all different sizes I'm gonna use this one and we will be putting it into we putting it into this end right here as you can see I'm holding it by the pin and there's a little um, nub up top there that will slide into that piece right there 
and it'll hold it that way. Okay, I got it in there. You will probably not be getting that out. I had to go off camera. And what I did was put that there, went like that, and pushed it in. And it clipped in. I couldn't do it with my fingers, it was too tough. But that is the completed set for the Caboose Industry 220S. So I set my point all the way out and I made sure my uh, ground throw was all the way out. I'm going to line up the hole with that nub and kind of get an approximation of where this thing sits. So it sits a little bit behind this ground throw here. So it'll probably be somewhere in here. We will drill it and find out. All right, got the hole drilled. I ovaled it out a little bit. I was concerned about that black piece fitting in there. And that's how it fits. Not bad. I got the hole right here, and then the the nail holes are back here. So I just cleared that hole. Yep, it'll work, I think. Okay, so what you are looking at is a very crude uh, setup for the wiring on this. I wanted to do it on top of the layout because it makes more sense than having everybody look underneath the layout. But I'm going to walk through this and explain it. I'm also going to put a diagram that the manufacturer has on how it's wired up um, to kind of help out. So I'm going to walk us through it and uh, hopefully it makes some kind of sense. Uh, to start off this right here it's facing that way the throw bar is right there it should be facing that way but with the way the wires are and everything it, it's just facing that way um, so the wiring on the diagram has this post the one that should be closest to the rail that wire is running to the outside rail and for this wire which should be farther away facing away from the rail is going to the closer rail. As for the center uh, beam right here, it goes over to another two pieces of wire here that come over and go to the inside rails of both tracks. And right back here, you probably can't see, but I have it gapped on the both inside rails. So if you go what will happen is when I switch it to have the train go in this this way it shuts off the power to this side so if you make the gaps farther down the line it'll shut that whole entire rail down likewise if I move this this way so the train goes out to the outer side of it it shuts down this one so you want your gaps close as possible to the turnout and these two wires go to the inside of the gaps. So my gaps are here, and I put my wires here. They both come up, meet up here, splice them together, and it runs to the middle. The throw bar is pushed out, so that means it would be pushing out the turnout, and we'd be coming onto the inside loop. Therefore, if we test the rail that's coming in closer to us, which is the way it should be going, we should get 14 volts. Boom. Just like that. Likewise, I'm going to turn this so it should be... It'll pull it in, 
and we'll go to the outside track. We should get 14 out there. Just like that. And let's test the inside track. Nothing. No power there. So, what happens is, right now, this one here is powered, and this one is powered. So we're taking the power coming in here, and we're going out this way, and it's feeding one of these two. And this one is unpowered. When we slide this back that way, this one is unpowered, and then these two are powered. Now, right now, the frog is still unpowered. And we're going to take another jumper, attach it to these wires here, and then like this, which obviously be coming from underneath that you just solder to the side. So I'm going to take it off. So we got power here. But if I if I move it into the frog, there's no power. Now I'm going to hook up this wire from these two to the frog and do the same thing. I got power over here. Now I got power. So this allows the power to come in here, go to the frog, come to the middle here, and then whichever way the switch is thrown, it takes the power and powers these two or it powers these two and shuts down one of the other rails. It's pretty simple. Um, I had to sit there and learn a little bit about how to put it all together, um, which was great. I like learning, and I hope you learn too. I'm not going to go over how to uh, hook up that uh, signal like I said I was going to. Better yet, I'm going to put a link up here, a little card on a video I already did of it. So I figured I'd be making two videos of the same thing. Just go to that video. It'll show how it'll show you how to do uh, dwarf signals. And it also works the same with that signal I showed you. I'll put a link at the end of the video to that uh, other video also. So I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Remember, you got to walk before you can crawl. And it makes sense if you don't think about it.